All right, next row. Here we have uh, these newer Edward Smokes. These are the C2M series, I think. Yeah, the C2M series. This one has, uh, I think this one has a relay bit built into it. And this one is just a regular conventional two wire. Both, well, I think this, yeah, this one's two wire. And so is this. Yeah. Um, all right. So here we have my Simplex 2903-9001 light plate. This and the the 986. These both came together. These came on, I found them on eBay, luckily. It was a very, very lucky find. Very good price. And apparently from what I've heard, these came out of a, a, a hardware store. So yeah, and it, they both work very well. Uh, I really like these. These are probably my favorite Simplex devices. The twenty nine because they're very, they're very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. I guess I don't know what the word is. They they just look good and they're very easy to work with because there's only like two things of wires and whatnot. Though the ninety eight six, which I'll go into a bit later, can be tricky. Uh, here is my Edwards Integrity. Um, and before I made a mistake, I said this is a seven fifty seven seven AT. Uh, my mistake, it was actually an 8AT because the 8ATs means it's 110 candela, unenhanced, but this came out of a building, uh, or like a system upgrade. Uh, it was made on the 20, 22nd week of 2000, though this says 1999. That, and if you ever wonder what where the date codes on these things are, they are right there. Those little numbers there, 9948, that's the date code. There's also a date code on the identification label, focus, 00220. Anyway, so here we have my two simplex T-bars. Here we have my 4251. Very simple, Everyone's have, you've all seen what these are. This is the older version with the, uh, well this one has a replacement lock. This is the older one with the uh, different handle. It's got a uh, smooth uh, handle grip. And this one was made in 1981, I believe. Yeah, 1981. And here we have my 2099-9754. You've seen these as well. Let me get the other key. The B key, this is proper B key. It's from 2002. Let's see, 2090. Oh, hold on, sorry. 2099 There we go. Uh, okay, so here's my other Edwards Genesis. This is the first one that I got. This is a G1F HDVM. Oh, white version. This was made in 2010. Uh, yeah, it's just the white version. I already... It's the same thing, only it's a little older, I guess. Alright, so, uh, I'm not gonna get into these yet. I'm gonna finish up here. Here's the 2901-9806 horn. Now this horn, as I said, I said a little bit earlier, these horns are very, are pretty painful to wire because they do not use screw terminals. They use the pigtail wires, which makes it a pain to, uh, like, I don't know, screw, or like the, twist the wires together and stuff, because you need like, a bunch, you need, so you need two wires from the knack, you have these two wires, so that's four, it's another two for that, plus you need a pair of wires to connect them together, and then the other two, if it's class, well, you'll actually need either if it's class A or B, because you still need wires, either going back to the panel or to the resistor, so you need like eight wires, just to wire up one of these, one of these things. The 9833s and the 38s are easier because they have terminals. Okay, so here are my 4903 horns. This is a, is a 9217 uh, electromechanical horn. This one is the one, both of these have the fried strobes, as I've said, because the, uh, I powered them on F, um, fully rectified for too long, and I did not know that they did not like that. But I am lucky, actually, that the horn in that has not fried yet, and I have not used these since. Uh, but this is the 9238, 9217. Both work. The horn on this is almost ready to go. I might get a new one. And I might eventually get like a 
probably get like a new horn and a new strobe module. I'll keep the body, but I like get a new strobe and probably for both of them. Okay, so here we have my two Edwards 895, 895B, I don't know the rest, it's 895. These are basically like the 892s, only they use the adapter horn electromechanical modules in them. Yeah, these are both, I also both got these in uh, eBay as well as those and that. Um, okay, so let's, uh, to wrap things up, here is my bilingual 270 SPL. I will, not, I will not be pulling the ones with the glass rods. But, uh, so here's a 270 GAO. Here's another 270 GAO. A lot of these came, these one, these came from the hospital. This one came from the hospital. This is a newer one. Uh, here's a converted 270 SPO, which I actually removed the screw terminal kind of bracket thing because it actually is easier to mount on a, a back box that is not very deep because you can just, it's all flexible, so it can like go up like that. I actually kind of like that. Uh, it's got this. Because actually the 270 SPOs at their school have the, the ULC listed stickers behind the handle, so I wanted to make them look like that. Same with this one, did the same thing. This was a 270 GAO. Another one, this is where zone 2 was. Uh, here's my Kitty K270 SPO. Have you seen this? There's another 270 GAO. Another one. This one I completely removed the switch and haven't covered it up yet. Uh, here's my, like, this is probably my newest pull station I own. Sorry. Uh, this is definite, <coughs> sorry, this is, um, I think from like 2016. Because I also got this at the hospital. This is a brand new one that they had. And I was lucky to get it. And I took the switch out of it too. Here is a 1950s uh, 270 GAO. Another 270 GAO that I converted to look like a, a regular one. A 270 GAO. A lot of these are just 270 GAOs. 270 GAO. This one is very dusty. Uh, another one that I haven't done anything with the switch. And finally, another 1950s one. So, that has been all the devices in my collection. And do note that I will be making more collection videos in the future when I get more devices. So, thanks for watching. Again, thank you for 300 subscribers. This is Connor Jones, and we'll see you next time.